Friday night, NCAA Women's Gymnastics live from the Smith Fieldhouse in Provo, Utah. Inside a quad meet featuring four teams from all over this great country. Texas Women's University, Utah State, Penn State, and of course on senior night, 16th ranked BYU. It's next on BYU TV. Welcome to the Friday Night Party live on BYU TV. Four teams, NCAA gymnastics, and it's about to go down in the Smith Fieldhouse. BYU, Texas, Women's University, Penn State, and Utah State. Wherever and however you're dialed in on BYU TV, great to have you with us alongside former gymnastics standout Mikkel Merkley. I am Spencer Linton. It's senior night at BYU, and the Cougars are ranked 16th. They have jumped into the rankings higher than they have been in a very long time. Also, you want to send off your seniors with the right feeling and make them have an impact in their last home meet. So how do you balance the pressure of the ranking and senior night, Mikhail? You know, the Cougars have a high ranking. They really don't need to worry about it at this point. They're going into regionals as a seeded team, which is huge. So tonight, they just get to worry about enjoying their seniors and being able to just have fun doing gymnastics. BYU got a result on Monday. They'll look for more of that tonight. Our impact performers will start with the two young ladies on the left side of the screen. Shyler Jones for Texas Women's University and Madison Ward from Utah State. Shyler has competed in all around since her freshman year and has just been a huge contributor ever since. She consistently scores nine nines and we can expect big things from her tonight. Maddie is also another consistent, reliable contributor in the gymnastics world who with a big floor routine that brought in a 9-9-2-5 at SUU a few weeks ago. We'll be expecting big things on floor. On the right side of the screen, look at the scores for Lauren Bridgens from just a meet ago on vault and bars, 9-9-2-5s. Understandably, the coaches want big things from her. For BYU and Shannon Hortman Evans, she's the reigning Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference Freshman of the Year. Yes, Lauren is just a freshman power powerhouse with a really refined bar routine that consistently scores in the 9-9 range and Shannon is just a crowd favorite on floor again we'll just be seeing big things from all these gymnasts tonight once again great to have you with us on BYU TV let's introduce you to the four head coaches that are in charge of their respective teams tonight we will start with Texas Women's University and head coach Lisa Bowerman in her seventh season Utah State and Amy Smith in her first season taking over for the Aggies in Logan, but competing tonight, obviously, in Provo. For the Penn State Nittany Lions, they made the cross-country trip with their head coach, Sarah Brown, also in her first season. So some major programs with some new looks at the head coaching position. And for the BYU Cougars in his third season, without a doubt his best season to date, Guard Young. As BYU from a year ago entering NCAA regionals as the 34th ranked team, now at number 16 after another solid road performance against Oregon State. Our keys to the meet brought to you by Tim Daly Ford of Spanish Fork. Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. Mikel, every meet we do, this is the same thing, and that's because. <laughs> There's no defense. Exactly. No <laughs> defense. So what do we have to They got to focus on the same thing. Hit routines. That means you hit all your skills. You stay on the equipment. You don't have any major fault or missed elements. Stuck landings on all the events except floor. That means your feet do not move once they hit the mat. On floor, the girls are allowed one small step called a lunge out of each of their passes without any deduction. Anything more than that is going to be a deduction. Which of these four teams is built to compete with BYU to win this quad meet tonight? Oh, gosh, I don't know. He does. He puts this meal on the spot for these guys. <laughs> you know, Utah State's looking really good. Honestly, all the teams are looking really good. They had a little bit of a small, uh, slower start, some of the teams, but they all are scoring in the 195 or higher range at this point in the season. As we've mentioned a couple of times, senior night for BYU, and what a class that the Cougars and Guard Young will say goodbye to. Mackenzie Douglas had her season 
ended short due to an injury. She was dynamite in her floor routine. Kylie Greenleaf, uh, Greenleaf speaking of floor routines, how about the 995 and then Brittany Haas <laughs> and Jill Van Mueller? This is quite a class. We have high expectations for these scores tonight. Sometimes gymnastics is very subjective, and I like to think that sometimes the judges are a tiny, tiny bit easier on senior night as a little gift to these girls. The human element always in play. <laughs> Did you get a break on your senior night? That's the real question. Oh, that was so long ago. I'll say yes. And that's when you scored the perfect 10, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> BYU number 16 in the country. They are the favorites, being the home team and the highest ranked right now. Now we look at the rotation. The Cougars will start on vault. Texas women's will start on floor. Penn State on the beam and Utah State will start things off on the bars. Moments away from getting underway. Now a quad meet has a very different feel, especially for those competing. It's not a duel and so you can't really watch each event. Everything is just constantly fluid and moving. How is that as a competitor in a quad meet compared to knowing what the other team does in each of their specific routines? So when you come into college, you are leaving club gymnastics. And in club gymnastics, this is exactly how it is all the time. All four events are going at the same time. So honestly, quad meets are a huge benefit for freshmen who maybe are still used to that being their element. There's a little bit of pressure off you. When it's just a dual meet, every single person is watching you compete, and that can be really intimidating. In this situation, there's so much going on. You just kind of get in and focus on your job without that added pressure. Angel Zong awaiting the go-ahead on vault for BYU to start off this quad meet. On vault, what we'll be looking for is a really aggressive um, beginning to the vault. They're going to do a round off onto the vault for the most part, and then we're going to be looking for height and distance as they leave the vault. Typically, the more amplitude a gymnast has and the further away they land from the vault, the better it is. Great start, a little crazy on the land. She almost had a stick, and it looked like she knocked herself off balance a little bit with her salute. Great start for BYU. What happens in gymnastics is we want to see the beginning competitor really hit their routine, and then the scores to rise after that. You'll see here, really gets into the vault nice and fast. Great entry. The arms are pretty straight on the vault. Sees the landing, goes a little too hard for the stick, and takes a little step on the salute. Angel Zong, the sophomore out of Langley, British Columbia of Canada. And she has been a pleasant surprise to fans of BYU Gymnastics this year, stepping up as one of the younger competitors for Guard Young Squad. Yes, she last year she was really working on controlling her nerves and learning how college works. And this year she's just been a great contributor on multiple events. Jordan Danbury will vault second for BYU. You'll hear intermittent cheers because competitors are finishing at different times, and we will take you all around the meet to show you the best of the best from tonight's quad meet. Angel Zong awaits her score on vault to kick things off for BYU. The Cougars already competed in a meet this week against 11th-ranked Oregon State on Monday night in Corvallis, losing by six-tenths. 196.975 for the Beavers to 196.375 for BYU. But that road result is something that has been really hard to come by for BYU in recent years. Not the case anymore. No, and that meet was crucial. What happens in gymnastics is you get to count six of your top meets going into postseason. Three of them have to be away meets. They had a lower score that BYU was looking to drop. By scoring 196 at Oregon, they were able to drop that lower score and move up significantly in the rankings. A look at BYU head coach Guard Young. Now gets the go-ahead from the judges. Signals down to Jordan Danbury. And here is vault number two for the BYU Cougars. Vault is kind of tricky. You have to wait for the judges to signal you before you can compete. Oh, my goodness. That was such a hard vault. And she nailed it. The Yurchenko with a half twist. 
is a blind landing and you cannot see the floor until you hit the floor, making it very, very difficult to stick. She hit the floor and she knew exactly where it was and didn't move her feet at all. Huge vault for BYU. What a start for BYU, Angel Zong and Jordan Danbury. Now we go to the beam and Penn State and one of our impact performers tonight, Lauren Bridgens. On beam, we are going to be looking for both tumbling and dance moves, including what we'll often see tonight is something called a flick lay, a back handspring to another back handspring with no hands. That will be an acro move. As far as dance moves go, we need to see a leap with a 180 split and a turn done on one foot. Really strong start on beam. There's that leap we were talking about. You know, Penn State beam does seem to be their wild card. It is their lowest ranked event, and they are just really focusing tonight on going in and doing their job and staying calm. Beam's really easy to overthink. The other events are very much powerhouse events. As far as you go in, it's very fast. Beam, you can overthink stuff, and it is only four inches wide. So if you are off by even a little bit, you are all the way off the beam. Now, in terms of rankings for the four teams competing tonight, Bridgens with the dismount and a solid beam routine. Huge dismount, that round off to the back one and a half. Again, these backwards landings, the front landings, you can't see until you've already hit. The round off one and a half is a challenging dismount as well. You have to be very aggressive, and it's at the very end of your routine when you're tired. Penn State comes in with a team regional qualifying score of 195.715. That's the 29th best in the country. Utah State not far behind that, number 38. And Texas Women's University in at number 52. Coming in at 38 is a big deal for Utah State tonight. The top 36 teams go on to postseason. So they will be looking for a high score tonight so they can increase their standing. There's only a few meets left for that opportunity. Madison Ward, another of our impact performers tonight for the Utah State Aggies on the uneven bars. Big Yeager immediately into the shootover. What we'll be looking for on bars tonight are two releases, one done high bar to high bar and one transitional release, typically high bar to low bar. Nice hit handstands and big dismounts with a stuck landing. That's a great start for Utah State, and if you look at the rankings, this is their weakest event as a team, so that's a great start. Yes, they too, this is another team that they are just looking to put everything together. They just started off a little bit slow, and it's not indicative of the team that they are. Tonight we're going to see big gymnastics that will hopefully increase their rankings. Great set. Madison Ward celebrating with her teammates. Utah State looking to bump up that RQS, a few more spots so that they can compete where it really matters in the NCAA Regionals. We will keep our coverage on bars. And another reminder for season highs, BYU trying to best the 196.625. Penn State has actually gone a quarter of a tenth higher than that. So they're certainly capable, 196.65. Utah State is in with a tenth over 196, and Texas Women's University at 195.575. We see these girls jumping off a springboard on the bars. They are not allowed to stand on the bar more than once. So we'll see her stand on the bar later, and that will be her only move. Beautiful Takacha there, tons of amplitude into the shoot over handstand. Again, we are looking for gymnasts to be hitting handstands before and out of all of their skills. When we see the gymnasts do two giants, we're expecting a big dismount, big double A. Good double A, a little over rotated on the landing, causing the step. But again, another great routine for Utah State. Brittany Jepson with the routine for Utah State, following up Maddie Ward. See how her body is nice and laid out the whole time. That's what the judges are looking for. Ideally, on these double lays, we don't want to see a big arch followed by a pike at the end. The more laid out they can stay the entire time, the more impressive it is in the judges' eyes. Now back to the vault and BYU. Here goes Jill Van Mirlo, one of four seniors competing tonight. 
That was a great save. When we see Jill's replay, we're going to see her hand look like it almost slipped on the vault. And she just maintained po posture the whole way throughout. And you wouldn't even know seeing that landing. It was a great vault. Vault's really tricky. It goes so fast. Just like the beam is so skinny, it's easy to fall off it. Vault is so fast that if you mess your round off up or the entry a little bit, it's very difficult to recover from that. Now to Tess McCracken back on beam for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Deep breath before you mount. Beautiful. Beautiful now. I've noticed with the Lions, they have beautiful composition. They, a lot of times, we just want to get on the beam and get off with as few deductions as possible. But they have beautiful dance elements. They have girls doing presses. They have girls doing needle scales. It's just a beautiful thing to watch. A good start here for Penn State would set a very important tone for the rest of the meets, especially when you look at this team as one of the top 10 best on bars. They'll make up some ground in that event. So if they can get through the beam, you called it the wild card. I think that's appropriate. This could be a big meet for Penn State. Yes, yeah, speaking with their coach, they said, we're just going to go in calm. We know we can hit beam. We just need to do it. And then regardless of what happens on beam, we're going to go nail our other three events. But I'm sure she's very pleased right now with the results this far into beam rotation. Amy Smith, the head coach of Penn State in her first season. And so far, so good for the Nittany Lions. Beautiful gainer off the side, that flick into the gainer. Little bit of speed, beautiful landing. This is the best part of college gymnastics right here is when you hit your routine and your teammates are just as excited as you are. Even though you are out there as an individual in gymnastics, your whole team is relying on you and it's so fun to come through for them. Tess McCracken. Congratulations from her teammates. <laughs> There is so much pressure that goes into this. You can understand why the smiles are so big. Here is Abby Bowden for BYU on the vault. You get one chance tonight. These girls will hit, hit, hit. One chance. Great vault from Abby Bowden. There are very few vaults we will see tonight that have a 10-0 start value. That tuck one and a half is one of them. A little bit low on the landing. She will be looking at a landing deduction. But overall, great set. She's only recently started competing that one and a half. So tonight's a great time to get in the practice for it. And back over to the beam for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Say hello to Brianna Singh. Typically what we're going to see are the gymnasts are going to start with their aerial series. Wow. That was a very, very difficult acro series. The standing layout into the second layout. We will not see that done often. You usually do, we'll see that first in the meets because the gymnasts, that's typically their hardest move. They want to get it over with. Then we'll see some probably leaps and dance and then we'll go right to the front side moves. Very solid side summy right there. Very aggressive beam set. I like what I'm seeing. She is not doing this. There's a difference watching the girls who are competing not to fall in comparison to competing to hit. How about that Ooh, dismount? Dismount, the full twisting back handspring into the full twist. Again, we're not going to see that often. It's very, very challenging, very risky. Hard to make and hard to do safely. Brianna Singh delivering on beam for Penn State. Now to the floor. Mallory Mordock of Texas Women's University. On floor, we're going to be looking for tumbling passes that go both forward and backwards. We're going to look for a tumbling pass that has at least two flips in it. And we're going to be looking for leaps and jumps, just like on beam. Mordock, one of the seniors for TWU, representing McDonough, Georgia. Big opening first pass there. We're going to see a lot of those. That's called a double pike. Very difficult move. 
We'll see a lot of a lot of passes we'll be seeing tonight are the double pikes, the double backs, which is the same skill done in a tuck position. And then a lot of back one and a half fronts and front lay front folds. Great landing on her double tuck there. You see the mat is in on the floor. That is not a deduction. It just makes the floor a little softer. It's a long season. The coaches want to protect their athletes' ankles. You can also see the floor is all blue with a white surrounding border. What happens is if the gymnast touches the white at all, it's an automatic one-tenth deduction. If she touches it with two feet, it's an automatic two-tenths off. Interestingly enough, all four of these teams are starting tonight's meet on their weakest events <laughs> as a team. And they're doing great. They have tremendous scores so far. Mallory Mordock for the Pioneers. Ending the, or nearing the end, I should say, of the first rotation. As you look at the second pass from Mordock. Great landing on this double tuck. Again, on floor, you are allowed to take one small step backwards or forwards. It's not a deduction, unlike the other events where you're not allowed to move your feet at all. On those back one and a half fronts, we're looking for the shoulders to stay up and the body to rotate around them. That's going to be a key factor in front tumbling scoring tonight. Of note, for those that aren't familiar with how collegiate gymnastics are scored, six competitors and they will drop the low score from each rotation thus far in the first rotation byu in with a 49.050 that matches the season high for a team vault score for byu utah state at 48.575 and penn state on beam at 48.475 our score box sponsor tonight brady industry is a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment we will await these team score on floor for the Pioneers and get that to you just as soon as it goes official. Here is Skylar Jones. Skylar is the anchor leg on three of tonight's four events for the Pioneers. Huge double back mount. Again, we talked about you can take a step back. If you don't have to take that step, it is so impressive. The amount of control that takes is incredible. Getting ready for that second pass. We're going to see double pike. Another great landing. Because she did two double backs right at the beginning, her final pass, we're going to be looking for her front pass and her two flip pass. Judges are looking for all of these things to be hit. There's so many little requirements that you don't realize that there are. The gymnasts have to hit every single corner of the floor. They have to do dance that comes down low, that stands up really high. So we're going to see the girls all over the place tonight. Slowing it down, just catching her breath a little bit before that final pass. Routines are a minute and a half, but they're a very tiring minute and a half. There's that back one and a half into the front leg. Another great landing. And again, those shoulders looked fabulous. The body rotated right around them, exactly what the judges will be looking for. Those that are into the Jason Bourne series would have recognized that <laughs> music from the Bourne trilogy. And we'll take a look at one of those fabulous passes. The double pike landing is great. Gymnastics, college gymnastics is fun because they do those big salutes at the end of everything. All right, we will calculate the score for the Pioneers of TWU coming back and move on to the second rotation of this quad meet. NCAA Gymnastics continues live on BYU TV right after this. BYU Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Brady Industries, honestly better. And by AAA. Learn more at AAA.com. Welcome back to the Smith Fieldhouse. Tonight's quad meet 
live on BYU TV. Our game summary presented by Deseret First Credit Union. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. The BYU Cougars match a season high on vault with a team score of 49.050. The Pioneers of Texas Women's University, 48.475 on floor. How about Penn State? 49.2, Mikkel. That is a new season high on their weakest event. Confidence boost and then some Utah State in with a 48.575 on bars. All four of the teams tonight, as we mentioned during the first rotation, starting competition on their weakest events. So things should only get better if we are going by what has happened this season. That takes us to our BYU Store Sports History Showcase, brought to you by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Rewind to January 23rd of 2015. BYU and Utah State in a dual meet. And the Aggies came into Provo and snuck out of here with a head-to-head -head win over BYU by two tenths, 195.5 to 195.3. The Aggies under new leadership and first-year head coach Amy Smith. Now the underdogs in tonight's meet and trying to get inside the top 36 of the regional qualifying score. So the pressure mounting for the Aggies to do something big here tonight as we welcome you back to our live coverage of this quad meet. We'll get going on bars here in just a moment as BYU transitions into rotation number two. I'm excited to see BYU on bars tonight. They're currently ranked 16th in the nation on bars alone. Their girls have just worked so hard. The assistant coaches talk about how guard just has a real gift for teaching E-level dismounts to his gymnasts. Gymnastic skills are ranked in difficulty A through E, E being the hardest, so that says a lot. Looking at the College Gymnastics Association rankings, you see the top nine and BYU in at number 16. That changes on a daily basis. And some people say, well, how do they vote? There, there are no votes involved <laughs> here. This is purely mathematical. The only human element is in what the judges give to you during the actual competition. So once the score is final, the rankings are based solely on math. BYU in rare air when you look at recent history for the Cougars trying to climb even higher and just maybe stun somebody in regionals. Yeah, they have a great chance going into regionals to get into nationals. It'll be the first time in a long time, and that's very exciting for them. A look at the BYU Cougars as they converse before they begin their bars rotation. Jill Van Mirla will start things off for the Cougars. Again, one of the four seniors being honored on senior night at BYU. We can see guard in there talking to them, giving them a little bit of a pep talk before they start. We've been joking about how we need a, ca a camera on guard alone. He is so excited for his girls when they hit. It has been so fun to watch this year. Just the excitement all the way around. BYU a top 20 team on bars. Not the only top 20 team we will see on bars from a team standpoint tonight. In fact, the Penn State Nittany Lions have the ninth best bars team and they just scored a season best on their worst event beam. So I think the Nittany Lions may give BYU a push here tonight. I'm excited to see it. Bars is all about pacing. It is so easy to get ahead of yourself. We're going to see Jill just taking a few deep breaths, getting ready. It's very important you focus on one skill at a time. As soon as you start to rush, your timing gets off so quickly. Jill Van Mirlo onto the uneven bars. Big week for her. She just got engaged to her longtime boyfriend, Rory Linkletter, who is a star track and field athlete at BYU, finished second in the 10,000 meters last year. Huge set from Jill so far. Big major release, transition release, look great going to the low bar. I haven't seen deductions. Tight, tight form, looking for a big dismount here, full in. Very good landing. Such a great start for BYU on bars. 
We're looking for those big starts, and then ideally the scores are just going to climb, climb, climb throughout the rotation. A great night thus far for Jill Van Mirlo. She matched a career high on vault with a 9.825 and just threw down that big bars routine. We await her score. Now over to the beam and the Utah State Aggies. This is seriously the worst part of being a gymnast when you are just ready to do your routine and hit your routine, but you have to wait for the judges to raise their hand for you to start. And sometimes it's very fast, and depending on how the routine looks before you, sometimes you can be staying there quite a while. It's important that these girls don't get in their heads and that they stay focused on their, the job that they have to do. Leighton Varnador. Her sister Logan also on the team, both freshmen out of Aiken, South Carolina. Beautiful flick lane mount. Again, we'll be seeing a lot of those tonight. You do have to do an acro series. Typically the flick lay is what happens. Occasionally we will see an acro series that goes forward and then backwards. They both qualify um, to cover the same requirement. Getting ready for our front side move. Beautiful front aerial. Routines, even though we say they start out at 10-0 start value, they really don't. It's kind of a trick. The routines start off about a 9-5, and then you have to do really tricky things to get your bonus. Like that move right there, the switch leap, switch leap. In order to get bonus, you need to do either really hard moves or connect moves together. Huge dismount. We don't see a lot of those tonight. Typically, we will see the gainer full off the side. That was a gainer one and a half. It is not a deduction to have her knees bent the way they were. That's just a different way to do it is in the tuck position. Great start for Utah State on the beam. Leighton Varnador, here is Mallory Mordock for the second time tonight. We saw her floor routine. Now representing the pioneers of TW on the vault. Just like we saw from BYU, we'll be seeing another Yurchenko full. Again, we're looking for the gymnast to get back into the vault really fast, and then we're looking for height and amplitude, amplitude and distance as they leave the vault. The higher they are from the ground, the better. The further away from the vault, the more powerful it looks. BYU, you heard a huge scream just moments ago as we watched Mallory Mordock on the vault. Great vault, a little bit under-rotated. She does a great job. That hop forward is a deduction, but she did it so fast. It's so tricky of her. So that the judges, if you can jump fast, it makes it harder for the judges to see how far you jumped. Your deductions are based on the size of your step or the size of your jump. So if you jump teeny tiny, less of a deduction. Really big hop out of a landing, big deduction. And I just mentioned the huge scream from BYU fans. That for Abby Bowden on the uneven bars. And you will see that routine right now. Great handstand leading into the blind change. Pike Yeager immediately into the shear over. Again, tons of bonus with all those twisting moves and the releasing that's happening. Great handstand. We're going to look for another big dismount from BYU. Huge full stuck landing not one ounce of moving as she hits the ground you can definitely see why her teammates were excited uh, the rejoicing is real there is, Abby <laughs> there's just so much pressure on these girls you practice all week to hit your sets and then you get one shot it's not like other sports where you get to try again later, you get to do another free throw or whatever. You get one chance, hit or miss. Back on beam in Utah State, here is Taylor Dittmar. Another tricky series. We're seeing a lot of trickiness tonight. One arm back handspring. What's happening is in college gymnastics, they're changing a lot of the requirements. They want to see more variety, so they change the rules almost requiring coaches to get a little bit more creative. And the coaches have really come through on that. Beautiful dance. She has really pretty hands. 
It's always nice when a gymnast is able to do beautiful acro and dance moves. Another big landing, the flick flick into the back one and a half. Solid set. I didn't see much for de deductions. Skylar Jones on ball now for Texas Women's University. When you use the word tricky, and you did a few times <laughs> during that last routine, I can't help but think about the great track from Run DMC. Well, okay. <laughs> You can go listen to that we'll, tonight. We'll play it tonight. <laughs> we'll be listening to it on commercial break. As you await Skylar Jones on the vault, a couple of scoring notes. Abby Bowden with a new career high of a 9-9. Huge bars. set. Huge set. Oh, whoops. Beautiful, beautiful. Half in the air. A little too much rotation. Over rotated just slightly, taking a huge step. That is going to be quite a large deduction. Now back to the bars. Shannon Hortman Evans. We visited Studio B and BYU Sports Nation today. Did you give her the good luck? Technically, it's called the Karma Mattel. Oh, and oh yes, the Karma. The Karma the has been Nation delivered. Karma. Huge Ginger. Could you see how high that was? above the bar. The judges love that. We want to see amplitude. We want to see catching with the arms straight and Shannon delivered. There was not one deduction in that set. That was, that was fantastic. I don't even know what to even, she has to get a good score. Abby Bowden just scored a 9-9 for BYU on the uneven bars. Did Shannon Evans just outdo that, perhaps? You can see guard saying 10, 10, 10 with his hands. Wow. And I'm hoping for it. My hopes are up. Now back to the beam in Utah State. Autumn DeHardy. Beam's hard. There, is, there are so many distractions going on right now. Floor music is blaring. BYU is going crazy on bars, and her job is to just stay calm and block that all out so she can stay on that skinny, skinny beam. Great mount opening up with the front aerial. One foot landing, very challenging. Flick lay again, handles it very well. All four of these teams are just immaculate tonight. The full toe turn, that's always a... That's always a sneaky move that the gymnasts do. It's technically their easiest move. They've done it since they were small children. But sometimes you forget and you don't focus on it as much as you should. And every once in a while, we'll see a full turn get the best of you. Getting ready for a big dismount here. Taking a second to catch your breath. Round off, double twist to another wow. stuck landing. Spencer, have we seen this many stuck landings all season? Autumn DeHardy. <laughs> she wants a piece of the excellent pie. <laughs> the excellent pie? I like it. <laughs> this has been an outstanding quad meet thus far. We have seen some remarkable performances. This late in the season to have career highs and season highs speaks volumes for these teams and these individual competitors. It really does. It's so easy to get complacent at this point in the season. You have been doing routines for so long. And at this point, you aren't making huge changes. You're pointing your toe a tiny bit harder or throwing your arms one degree more. But it makes such a big difference in your score at the end of the day. So these girls have obviously been working very hard and staying very focused all the way to the end of season. Many of you wondering what Shannon Hortman Evans scored on the uneven bars. Her score is in a 9-9-5. I mean, I guess we'll take it. I don't know if there's a 10 involved in that. <laughs> but wow, what a performance from BYU Huge on bars set. between Abby Bowden and Shannon Evans. 9-9 and 9-9-5 back to back. Career high for Evans. You're looking at Penn State on the floor in rotation number two of this quad meet. Penn State is coming off a huge meet, and their goal tonight is just more of the same. They want to do the same stuff that they know they are capable of doing and what they've been doing the past few meets. 
Sabrina Garcia for Penn State. Ready to roll on the floor for the Nittany Lions. Big opening pass. You can see there she doesn't put her heel down. She can tell she's close to the edge of the floor and she is not willing to give up any deductions. Very smart move by Sabrina. Two teams have finished this second rotation. BYU on bars with a huge 49.425. And the Pioneers at TWU, 48.775 on vault. That's a good mark for the Pioneers as well. Anytime a gymnast uh, team scores in the 49, you know they had an exceptional performance. 49 is very difficult to attain. They almost, a 49 four that's almost a fall difference as far as they are just killing it tonight taking an opportunity here to really show off to the crowd catch your breath getting ready for that final pass See throughout the night, these gymnasts, their teammates are all doing their dance off to the side of the floor with their teammate that's performing. It's just a fun thing that they like to do. You have seen these routines hundreds of times at this point, probably thousands. And it's just so much team camaraderie that you get to see there. Sabrina Garcia on the floor for Penn State. Back to the bars, the anchor leg. Spencer, we have been waiting all season for Brittany to get her 10 out. Tonight might be the night. Huge handstand. Her form is just perfect. You could not ask anything more from Brittany. Her toes are so pointed the whole time. Gonna be looking for a big stick right here. Good control on that handstand. Nice fast giants. Her double A is gigantic. She doesn't move her body at all, and that is exactly what we were talking about earlier. We don't want to see it go arch and then pike down. She just stays totally laid out the whole time and looks like she is flying. Brittany Haas on the uneven bars in with a 9-9, nine, nine, Mikkel. We were so close, Happy that little hop. 9-9. Nine, nine. I'm just a big Shannon Brittany Evans, 9-9-5, nine, nine, Brittany Haas, 9-9. Nine, nine. By the way, the 49.425 for BYU on bars. Second highest bar score in gymnastics program history. Oh my goodness. Forget season best. <laughs> We're talking about almost a program, program history. Best. That was a huge opening pass that we just saw on floor, the full in in the pike position. That is beyond compare as far as the difficulty that we'll be seeing tonight. Anytime a gymnast does a double back, that is very hard. She added a full twist to the double back. It's incredible. Brianna Singh was outstanding on the balance beam for Penn State, pacing them to a season best beam score of 49.2. Now she's bringing it on the floor. Again, these gymnasts are just going to slow down a little bit at the end. They're very tired. They have to do something very hard. Finishing your routine, they're doing something after sprinting all over the place that most people can't do just after resting however long they want. I'll give an amen to that. <laughs> the anaerobic aspect of gymnastics will really get you. Brianna Singh, final pass. Huge double pike at the end. Great landing. These routines tonight are just incomparable to what we have seen in the past from all four teams. The second rotation now complete. Brianna Singh being congratulated, understandably so, after a big floor routine. Shannon Evans stealing the show on the uneven bars for BYU, the sophomore sensation with a career best 995. Watch this dismount from the reigning Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference Freshman of the Year. Rotation number three up next. BYU Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Emergency Essentials, 30 years of helping people prepare. The BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Deseret First Credit Union, sharing your values. And by DexterLaw.com, for help when you need it most. 
BYU Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Brady Industries, honestly better. And by AAA. Learn more at AAA.com. Welcome back to Provo, Utah, and this quad meet, NCAA Gymnastics. Our mid-match essentials brought to you by Emergency Essentials for over 30 years helping people prepare at BePrepared.com. Emergency Essentials. Thus far, how have the hits and stuck landings gone, Raquel? <laughs> so, so good. I have never seen so many stuck landings in the Smith Fieldhouse as we have seen tonight. We'll have the updated rotation two scores for you in just a moment as we move to the third event for all four of these teams tonight. BYU will compete on the balance beam. TWU on the uneven bars. Utah State on the floor and Penn State moves to vault. The scores from rotation number two, 49.425. Second highest score in program history on bars for BYU as a team. Utah State with a 49.050. Penn State, an identical score, but on the floor compared to Utah State's beam. And TWU on vault, 48.775. Penn State with that 49.050. That is also a season best in the floor rotation. So they have gone season best on beam and floor and are now streaking towards the vault and their team's best event, the uneven bars. While we have a moment before rotation number three begins, let's take a look at some news and notes within NCAA gymnastics. Week eight awards, the vault specialist specific to the Mountain Room Gymnastics Conference. Faith Leary, Utah State, was the vault specialist of the week, scoring a 9-9. The bar specialist, she just saw her compete, Brittany Haas, a 9-9-2-5. And the beam specialist for the Cougars and the MRGC was Natasha Trejo Marsh in with a 9.9. .9. BYU on the beam in rotation number three. We will begin our rotation three coverage on the floor with fellow MRGC foe for BYU, Utah State. And opening up on the floor for Utah State is Leighton Varnador, who put together a really nice beam routine that we saw about 15 minutes ago. Leighton is another one of those gymnasts that we will see her have two double backs in her floor routine. It's a very advanced style of routine that we're seeing tonight. These these teams are very, very good, and it's such a pleasure to watch because we get to see so much difficulty and so much good technique being done here tonight. The Pioneers of TWU ready for the uneven bars, but again, we will start rotation three coverage on the floor with Amy Smith, the head coach of Utah State, and one of her fantastic freshmen, Leighton Varnador. Her twin sister Logan also competing on the team. Leighton receiving some final instruction before she begins. And rotation three is underway on the beam and uneven bars. If you're just tuning in, what we are looking for on floor are tumbling passes that go forward and backwards. We're looking for leap passes that hit 180 degrees. So a full split in the air. We're looking for the gymnast to use the whole floor and to not touch that white. If they go out of bounds, if they leave the blue carpet, it is an automatic one tenth deduction. If they take two steps out, it's two tenths off the score right away. First pass for Varnador, Utah State. Big double tuck, lots of amplitude on that. The judges will be judging these girls based not on how well, not only on how well they throw the skills, but how high they throw the skills. Getting ready for that double pike. Another great landing. We'll be looking tonight when the girls' feet hit the floor. We want to see that their chests are up. We do not want to see that the girls' chests are still down by the time the feet hit. Very, very difficult to do. Beautiful leap pass, slowing it down, getting ready for that final pass. 
Another big routine. Varnador strong for the Utah State Aggies who enter rotation three in third place. The 97.6. Texas Women's University in fourth, 97.25. BYU leading by two tenths and a quarter after a massive bars rotation, 98.475. And Penn State at 98.25. And there you see the Nittany Lions on the vault. Big your chinkle full. Your chinkle full is a very difficult vault. Starts out at 9.95. A little low on the landing. You want your legs as straight as possible on these landings in order to avoid deductions. Gymnastics at this point is really just about avoiding deductions. These guys all have all the skills that they need. And so we're looking for, it's very nitpicky at this point, which is great. It's great to be at that point in your gymnastics career. Sabrina Garcia, the vault you just saw from Penn State. And Courtney Chinnery, ready to roll on vault for the Nittany Lions as well. Chinnery, a freshman from Suffolk, Virginia. And another freshman competing here tonight. We have seen some high level underclassmen competing. For sure. The quad meet does help some freshmen. And I'm wondering if that's helping contribute to some of these high scores. They are used to competing in this kind of environment. It's not overwhelming. It's very exciting. It feels like coming home, just like you just finished your club career. And they are just performing tremendous skills this evening. Chinnery gets a high 10 from her head coach, Sarah Brown. And we will go to the beam and the BYU Cougars. See Cheyenne Hill, who just finished her beam routine. Another look at the head coach of Utah State, Amy Smith. You can imagine how many different routines she has <laughs> memorized for all of the girls that compete on her team. Every little piece of the routines. <laughs> on the uneven bars, Morgan Cole for the Pioneers. Morgan Coley, rather. We're going to see a different kind of release move. The toe onto the high bar into the immediate shoot over. That Shaposhnikova type move does count as her major release. So we're not going to see another release here only on the high bar. We're getting ready for the dismount. Morgan Coley. Good dismount, a little bit interesting technique. It looks like we we're going to go for a double lay and went to a double pike instead. Not necessarily a deduction, just an interesting way of throwing it. Back live on the balance beam, BYU and Hannah Miller. BYU has just become so consistent on what was once their wild card event. They are just throwing their skills with authority. They are planning on making them. They're not wondering if they'll make them. They're wondering how perfect are they going to make their skills, and it really shows. Brianna Pearson scored a 9-8 to open up the beam scoring for BYU. Cheyenne Hill awaiting her score, while the Cougars watch Hannah Miller. Big jump pass right there. A nice, big split jump. That's what we want to see. We want to see on these split jumps that they are a full 180 degree, just a straight line across. And that they are, we are looking for snappiness and amplitude. There's a lot of aspects that go into that. Great routines.
Hannah Miller on beam for BYU. A clean routine for the Cougars. Now to Brianna Singh on vault for Penn State. She was outstanding on beam and floor. Now for the vault. Huge one and a half, another 10 0 star value. We are not going to see. She has just been quite the competitor all night. Her difficulty level is out of this world. You see her wearing, some people think those are socks. Those are called vaulting shoes. Not a deduction again, just preference. Sometimes they help the girls. Um, you're running on carpet. It's kind of weird. And so a lot of times the girls will wear those shoes and they feel like they get a little bit better grip on the carpet as they run. Out of the beam and one of the steady competitors for BYU and their head coach guard, young Natasha Trejo Marsh. I keep calling, I, all season I've called Natasha a senior because she just... She seems like it. Yeah, she, there's just a calmness about her. She's not a senior, she's a junior, but she brings a senior feeling about her gymnastics. She looks very calm, very confident, very steady. It's so refreshing to see that. Beautiful kick over right into the back handspring. Natasha is one of my favorite to watch on beam because she has some extra skills up her sleeve that if she needs them, she pulls them out. If not, she doesn't use them. And it's always like a fun guessing game. Marsh has a career best of 9-9 nine, nine on the balance beam. You can see why her teammates would love her on there, though. She doesn't even look like she's not stressed out one bit. She's just up there doing her skills, making everything look very easy. And what she's doing is hard. She just did a jump called a ring jump where she throws her head back. She loses sight of the beam. It's very challenging. But she does everything like it's not a big deal at all. And just really preps the next girls to just feel really calm and confident as they do their routines. Natasha Marsh adding to the confidence wave that BYU has brought thus far. Now back to the vault in Penn State. Another big one and a half landing a tiny bit low. If you do the one and a half, your, your score automatically starts a half tenth higher than these girls doing just a full. So we might, even though her landing was a little bit low, her score may be higher than some of the other ones we've seen because it starts higher. Lauren Bridgens, the most recent default for Penn State. The fourth to go in that rotation, and now to the uneven bars. Lots of great connections there. That clear hip into the finger, into the shoot over. That's great bonus points. The girls are looking to connect all their skills to earn bonus. That was a great double lay. You saw how her body was completely straight the entire time. Bria Northrup for the Pioneers. A little bit further, it, the, the, the dismount went a little bit further than she planned. You could see it in her face, she was a little surprised. She did such a good job keeping it up and just minimizing any deductions that could be taken on that landing. Great set to finish bars up. Now back to the beam and the BYU Cougars entering this meet ranked 16th according to regional qualifying score. And here is Abby Bowden. The energy in the building has been outstanding all night. There's just so much good gymnastics happening right here, including that move we just saw. The front pike kickover is, I believe it's an E, which again, easy skills ranked A, most challenging skill you could possibly do is an E. You are not, you get bonus just for doing them. Beautiful leap pass there, showing a great flexibility set. Abby Bowden already scored a career high on the uneven bars of a 9-9. Her career best on the beam is also a 9.9.
Round off into the one and a half, stuck at dismount. Not much to deduct in that routine as well. These are just mammoth sets that we are seeing tonight. Gymnastics fans are being spoiled tonight. <laughs> the quad meet in Provo, Utah from the Smith Fieldhouse. Great to have you with us on BYU TV alongside Mikkel Merkley, former gymnastics standout. I am Spencer Linton. Senior night for BYU. The Cougars hoping to celebrate with a quad meet win. Right there with them thus far, Penn State. And you're watching the floor now with the Utah State Aggies. Huge, huge opening pass. That skill is called a full in. Very, very difficult to do. And she does it the most difficult way you could think of by not grabbing her legs. When you grab your legs on the double back, you create rotation. You can pull yourself around faster. She uses just pure strength and technique to make that around with no problem. Maddie Ward for Utah State, the fifth to compete on floor for the Aggies. BYU and Utah State still awaiting their scores on beam and floor. Penn State in with a 48.950 on, on vault, rather, and TWU with a 48.75 on bars. That's a very good score for the Pioneers on the uneven bars. Final pass, she's hit her first two. We're looking to finish the routine up strong. Huge double pike, great landing, no deductions. Madison Ward. We made her the impact performer for the Aggies for a reason. And now, Jill Van Mierlo. On the beam for BYU. Jill is another one of those gymnasts that just brings such a level of confidence. She's done this since she was a freshman. Oh, and an uncharacteristic fall for the senior. Very uncharacteristic. Unfortunately, the, the Cougars are going to want to drop this score. Now, just to add some context here, we're shocked because Van Mierlo has the highest career beam score for anyone currently on BYU's roster with the 9925. Yes, it's not, definitely not the way she wanted to perform at her senior meet. However, BYU has already put up tons of great scores. They're not going to have to count this. So while it is a bummer, um, it's not going to affect the team score, which is great. And she did such a great job just finishing strong. It's so hard when you miss your first skill because you have an entire routine left that you still have to perform. And she just really got back in the game and did her job and finished strong. Autumn DeHardy for Utah State on the floor. And to echo what you just said about Jill Van Mierlo on the balance beam, the silver lining for the Cougars is she's the last to compete. So yep. they can drop that score they already have five solid routines in, and BYU will not take a major deduction because of that fall. Nice double pike in the open. Floor tends to be most people's favorite event to watch. It's a time that the gymnasts get to have a little bit of fun, relax in between their passes. Huge Rudy into the back layout step out. These gymnasts are so smart when they do those layout step outs. They're a little bit easier to stick. And again, it's just minimizing deductions at this point. So the hits, the sticks, we're looking to just not give anything away. So if you can land in the step out and control it well, then the judges can't take anything from your landing. DeHardy for Utah State. BYU's beam team score is in at a 48.850.
target typically this season for BYU has been right around 49, but nothing to shake your head still, at. Still, yes, yeah, still a very, very good score. DeHardy off the floor, but we'll take another look at her first pass right here. The back, the front rooting into the back layout. And then she does another tricky thing. She does a prone landing out of her last pass with the Shushanova. Again, very tricky. It's so smart because if you're landing on your belly on purpose, the odds of you falling are pretty slim. Three rotations in the books at the quad meets from the Smithfield House in Provo, Utah. We will move to the fourth and final rotation right after this short break. BYU to the floor, Penn State to the bars. Watch out for some high scores on the way. BYU Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Emergency Essentials, 30 years of helping people prepare. The BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Deseret First Credit Union, sharing your values. And by DexterLaw.com, for help when you need it most. Our Deseret First Credit Union meet summary, brought to you by Deseret First Credit Union, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Through three rotations, BYU with a slight edge over Penn State. The Cougars in with a 147.325. Penn State, a quarter and a tenth behind at 147.2. Utah State holding on to a 146.675. And Texas Women's University in at 146 even. Those are the scores after three rotations. We'll come back with Penn State on bars, ranked ninth in the country as a team. BYU at number 14 on the floor. Stay with us on BYU TV. More from the quad meet after this. Welcome back to the Smithfield House in Provo, Utah. Rotation number four, moments away from starting in this quad meet featuring the 16th ranked BYU Cougars. They are the host for Penn State, Utah State, and Texas Women's University. BYU ranked 16th according to the RQS, or regional qualifying score. And for any of you who might not know what that is or what it entails. Mikkel Merkley is here to solve the scientific <laughs> issue. What do you Only have for us, Only the Mikhail? most confusing way to <laughs> calculate who's in the lead, huh? Take the top six meets that the gymnasts have competed in. Three must be away. You drop the high score just in case there's a meet where judges were given out scores pretty easy. Average the five remaining scores. That is your RQS. The top 36 teams are going to compete at regionals, looking for a spot at nationals. BYU is pushing an area where they haven't been in about 13 years. The Cougars were ranked as high as number 11 in 2005. But since then, they have floated somewhere between 24 and 50. Now back up here in year number three under Guard Young. They want to get back to that national seating and take the next step. You know, I believe Coach Brogan was on that 2005 team. So she's been there before. Guard's an Olympian. The assistant coaches, they were amazing gymnasts themselves. So they've really been able to take this team and just mold them into what gymnastics used to be for BYU. 1,724 in attendance tonight at the Smithfield House. It is so loud and exciting here. And the gymnasts are really feeding off that energy. It is so fun to do gymnastics when it's just, it's just chaos all around you. And you get into your zone and all you can focus on is your task at hand. And it's the best feeling. Huge to catch up to open up this routine. Great handstand control. Penn State, ninth ranked team on bars in the entire country. Tess McCracken competing right now. We are going to see some huge handstands, lots of control, lots of great connections tonight. This has been the rotation we have been waiting for all evening. Seeing these guys on bars, be ready on floor. If you just tuned in, this was a great time to do it. 
BYU with a tenth and a quarter point lead going to the final rotation. Penn State should score huge on bars, but will it be enough to overtake BYU, who is now competing in their best team event on the floor? The head coach of the Nittany Lions is Sarah Brown in her first season. She takes over a program that has remarkable history. The Nittany Lions, a regular in the top 10 for about two decades now, but have taken an uncharacteristic drop. Big score tonight will help them move back in the right direction, and so far, so good. You know, again, this is an amazing team. They just had a little bit of a slow start getting into their season. So assuming that they hit bars tonight like they've hit all their other events, and that they've been hitting bars, they are going to move up considerably in the rankings because of that RQS score. They will be able to drop one of their lower scores, put this in its place. Penn State's season high on bars of 49.375. That is dead equal to what BYU has put up as, as a season high on the floor with a 49.375. Second to compete on bars for Penn State is Ava Vertiflor. is key on bars. We're looking to just do one skill at a time. Don't get ahead of yourself. Hit those handstands before you go into your more difficult tricks. The handstands are really tricky because if you hit them too short, it's a deduction. If you go too hard, you cast over, which is a bigger deduction. So it takes a lot of control and a lot of confidence to really nail that handstand in vertical. Big Jaeger. Nice handstand leading into the shoot over. Ava Vertiflor now up with a handstand and preparing for the dismount. Nice blindfold into the tuck double back. So good. Yeah, so good. The tuck double back is a little bit easier of a dismount, which is why she does the blindfold in front of it, increasing the difficulty because of the combination. Here is Utah State on vault. Really big opening vault for Utah State. Ellie Gollison. She foregoes the round off entry that we have seen throughout the night. It's more challenging. It increases the level of the vault. These Kazamatsus, they, uh, you don't have that speed and umph that comes from doing the round off and you have to create that all through your run and driving through the board directly into the vault. Handles it very well, does a great job. We'll stay on the vault with the Utah State Aggies. You can see the coaches reminding their gymnasts we're looking for good landings. Their assistant coach, Whitney Johnson, addressing Maddie Ward. At this point, all the girls can hit great vaults. We know they can get up, hit their vault. What is going to make the difference for them tonight is if they hit those stuck landings. We want to see the feet hit, the chest is upright, no moving. First score in on the floor from BYU. Brianna Pearson is a 9775. Again, we'll take you between all four of these events in the fourth and final rotation here. Sometimes what happens is what we just saw earlier was a different vault that the judges don't see often. At this point, they've really nailed down their Yurchenko full judging system. However, if the judges are too far apart in their scores, if one judge puts up a 9-9, another judge puts up a 9-7, what they will do often is they'll have to get together for a small conference. Where that was a little bit more of an unusual vault, they might have taken different deductions. And so it leads to a conference, and the gymnasts have to wait until the judges are ready before they can compete their vaults. Madison Ward following up Ellie Gollison's vault. Huge fall! We saw her get in the air, twist really fast, and then throw the arms out for the landing. That's what we want to see. It shows that they complete their twist at a high amplitude, and it not only makes the stick easier, it just makes the whole, it raises it to a more elite level. 
Now for the pioneers of Texas Women's University and Hunter Vincent. Great flick lay, very confident on the landing. Such a relief when you hit that very first skill. It kind of paces you for the rest of your set. A scissor side. That's something that we don't see a ton on beam. You're hitting a split, turning, and then hitting a full straddle. The tricky part with that is, is that you get a deduction if either one of those split or straddle movements is not a full 180. So it's a little bit of a risk. Again, in our straddle full. Very confident in that shaping. You'll see gymnasts tend to be very good at certain shapes with their body, whether that be pikes, whether that be straddles, and you want to take advantage of that at this point in your career. Big double full, great routine. A well-deserved cheer from her teammates there, finishing up that set. to the vault and Faith Leary of Utah State. Nice aggressive approach. Huge vault again. Tons of amplitude twist very fast. Tons of time to land. Utah State has a very strong vault. They just have very good technique in that fact that they get up, twist fast, lots of room for the landings. Faith Leary of Utah State, freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio just vaulted for the Aggies. Just joining us, BYU leading coming into the fourth rotation and heading to the Cougars' strongest team event on floor. Penn State back a tenth and a quarter, also on their strongest event as the ninth ranked team, uneven bars team in the country. They have not disappointed. We'll have some more from the Nittany Lions on uneven bars coming up shortly. The pioneers of TWU on beam. And again, Utah State <laughs> on the vault to finish up. Little dance to the camera there. It's always funny what gymnasts don't even notice the cameras, and then other ones that they don't bother them. They just dance right toward them. Beautiful three skill series there. It's very challenging to fit all three moves on the beam. The beam is only 16 feet long. jump pass usually when we see three jumps in a row you can assume she is doing that to earn bonus points nice side aerial there again the gymnasts need to go either forward or sideways on the beam in addition to their back pass they don't have to do both, but they need to do one or the other. So that side aerial will count for that requirement. Alyssa Kelly on the balance beam for the Pioneers. Now we go to Lauren Bridgens, who is always a real threat to throw down a huge score and her uneven bars performance. Wow, look at that handstand. Big release here. Beautiful. Right into the shoot to handstand. Into a third release called a toe on catch high. The connection of the three releases is a big deal. She gets to do a little easier to play because she hit the whole set already. Lauren Bridgens, perhaps flirting with a perfect 10. take another look at that we are going to see three consecutive releases this is very difficult to do we're gonna go up to the high bar back down to low bar hits the handstand right into the toe catch high and then solid solid landing goes up sees the ground well before she hits it i did not see a deduction what about you spencer we saw a 995 earlier tonight from BYU Shannon Evans. We had a hard time finding a deduction in there. The judges saw a tiny one apparently, but now we wait to see the score from Penn State and Lauren Bridgens. 
Tense moments, <laughs> for sure. It's so exciting being the next person following these great sets because you just ride that momentum. Your confidence is at an all-time high. You've hit these routines thousands of times, and now you just get to get up, relax, and do what you've trained your body to do. BYU on the floor, Kylie Greenleaf knows a thing or two about throwing down a big score for the Cougars on this event. And the score for Penn State's Lauren Bridges is in. A perfect 10. No. It has happened here tonight. Look at this landing again, you guys. She just gives nothing away to be taken on. Beautiful blindfold, feet are together. Again, she sees the floor right there. She knows exactly where it is and does not have to do anything except for salute the judges and just revel in her success. Wow. A perfect 10 from Penn State's Lauren Bridges. Incredible. Now Kylie Greenleaf on the floor for BYU looking to answer back with a big score. Oh, again, she did such a good job staying in bounds. These gymnasts are doing great tonight with their awareness of the floor. Had she put her heel down, it would have been an automatic deduction. She really just sucked that in. Hanging on with those tippy toes. <laughs> and the flag did not go up, so there was no deduction there. gymnastics career and now the pioneers on the balance beam and you are watching Skylar Jones once again this is a huge series the round off into the layout double down you are doing a twisting move a round off and then doing a layout and landing back on the beam. It's so easy to get off on that, and she just handles it beautifully. Tiny, tiny bobble for a tiny, tiny deduction. The bigger your wobbles are, the bigger your deduction is. I've had people ask me if, as long as they stay on the beam, do they just get no deductions? Wouldn't that be awesome if you just stayed on? But that's not the case. Huge front kickover, lots of amplitude, nice landing. Getting ready for a big dismount here. Round off one and a half, solid landing, tremendous routine. Skylar Jones for the Pioneers being congratulated by her teammates. We have a Final tallied score in from Penn State on the uneven bars, Mikkel. 49.475. Holy moly. Highlighted by a perfect 10. You just can't beat that. That is a great night. There's Jill Van Mirlo and her senior night floor performance for BYU. Another crowd favorite. She's just such a performer and really owns this routine. She gets out there, huge Rudy. She had finished twisting almost a foot before she hit the ground. Big leap pass here, beautiful. She really knows how to use the floor. Off 
often you'll see the floor is made of springs. It's springs covered by wood and then a little bit of foam. And some gymnasts really know how to use it on their leaps and jumps, and she just does it so well. Jill Van Mierlo, senior night floor performance for the 16th ranked BYU Cougars. You know, at the beginning of the meet, we talked about the girls' goal tonight. They weren't necessarily going after a score. They just wanted to enjoy gymnastics, honor their seniors, enjoy their time with their seniors. And I think we can confidently say they accomplished that goal. More waterworks, and, and not hard to understand why. With how many hours that these young women put in, and really the abuse that their bodies <laughs> suffer. It's crazy what they do to compete for uh, their individual universities and to represent their schools. So huge credit to all of the young women performing tonight and the four seniors for BYU that are competing in front of their home crowd for the final time. Four rotations in and done. We will calculate the final scores and get those to you in just a moment. Here is our performance of the meet brought to you by Dexter and Dexter. As passionate about shouldering people's burdens as it is about BYU, Dexter and Dexter Law helps you when you need it most at DexterLaw.com. Lauren Bridges with a perfect 10. <laughs> no surprise this was chosen as the performance of the meet. Great set. She is going to be so excited about that. That's something, the perfect 10 club is so tiny. What a night for Bridges of Penn State. It just, you just don't see those numbers very often. You really don't. It is so, so hard to get a perfect 10. We've been waiting for them all season. You just don't see them often. And the best part is these girls do perfect routines in, in, in practice. So it's just so rewarding when you hit it in a meet just like you've done in practice over and over. Uh, by the way, she's a freshman, so... What? Are yeah. you kidding me? There, there's that, oh, too. I'm so excited. Our MVP of the meet tonight brought to you by AAA. What does your insurance do when it's not doing insurance? It should do more. Learn more at AAA.com. And it is a clean sweep for that young lady, Lauren Bridges. Picture time. <laughs> Throw that out on the gram for everybody to see and Twitter uh. and Snapchat. What a night. The final scores are in from this quad meet. And on the heels of a perfect 10, Mikhail, Penn State will win this meet. 49.475 on bars, pacing them. BYU in with a 196.5. Huge senior scores night. all the way around. Utah all State with a solid 195.725 and the pioneers of Texas Women's University in with a 194.925. Outstanding gymnastics, top to bottom. Congratulations to Penn State and to BYU on senior night as they put up much needed big scores for their respective regional qualifying scores. That'll do it for us from the Smith Fieldhouse. Don't forget to watch tomorrow as BYU baseball debuts their 2018 season against the University of Nebraska at Omaha on BYU TV. Coverage starts at 1 Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain on BYU TV. Dave McCann and Gary Scheide on the call with Jason Shepard. For Mikkel Murphy and every member of our outstanding BYU TV crew, I am Spencer Linton saying good night from Provo, Utah. We'll see you next time.